We continue with our series, Staying Strong in Difficult Days, and today's message is on listen or listening. So I wanted to start off by sharing a story that is in the Old Testament, but a story that I think is so relevant to our topic today and to the day in which we're living. So as you know, in the Old Testament, God often spoke through prophets. And most prophets spoke at a time when Israel was in rebellion, and the prophets came to tell them to repent, and if they repented, God would um, bless their nation or bless, you know, bless his people if they would repent. But prophets were not liked in that day. And there's a story in Jeremiah that really just spoke to me when I was reading it the other day. So Jeremiah was one of those prophets that was sent by God to preach during a time of Israel's rebellion. And he actually spoke God's judgment on Israel for 40 years. 40 years. He was not liked. It tells us that the people did not even listen to him. We find out in his writings in the book of Jeremiah and the book of Lamentations that he was lonely, that he was abandoned. His whole family abandoned him. He was often faced depression and he was discouraged a lot, but he kept going. He kept going. We come to a story in Jeremiah 27 and 28 that goes like this. In chapter 27, God gave Jeremiah a word. And God said to him, do not listen to your false prophets. So even in that day, they had plenty of false prophets, plenty of people saying that they were coming in the name of Jesus, or not in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. They were coming in the name of God, and there were plenty of false prophets. And God said, do not listen to your false prophets, fortune tellers, interpreters of dreams, mediums, and sorcerers who say, the king of Babylon will not conquer you. They are liars. And then he goes on later on and he says, This is what the Lord says. Do not listen to your prophets who claim that soon the gold articles taken from my temple will be returned from Babylon. So that's what God told Jeremiah. And then we come to chapter 28 and it says that one day in late summer of that same year, right after Jeremiah got that message from the Lord, it says that he was in the temple preaching. And he, of course he was preaching judgment and repentance and all of that. And it says that there was a prophet from Gideon by the name of Hananiah that came and he addressed Jeremiah publicly. It says that all the priests and the people were there in the temple courts and they listened to what Her- Hananiah I had to say and he said this so basically he was coming against what Jeremiah was saying and he said this this is what the Lord of the heavens armies says this is what the Lord of heavens army says it's amazing that he didn't even say this is what the Lord says no he wanted them to think that he was really from God that he had a word from God that he was authentic in his word He was authentic in his word. He said this. He said, The Lord of heaven's army says that I will remove the yoke of the king of Babylon from your necks. Within two years, I will bring back all the temple treasures that King Nebuchadnezzar carried to Babylon. Wow, that was in total, de- and, and God had already spoken to Jeremiah and told Jeremiah not to listen to that word. So Jeremiah was there, and he stood, and he said this. He said, well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But remember this, that ancient prophets warned of war, disaster, and disease. So a prophet who predicts peace must show he is right. Must show he is right. And then I, I, a little bit more conversation went on, and it says that Jeremiah walked out. He just walked out. And it doesn't say that he was frustrated, but I think he was. He was very frustrated. And then it says, soon after, God gave a message to Jeremiah to take to Hananiah. And this is what the Lord said. The Lord has not sent you. The Lord has not sent you, but the people believe your lies. They believe your lies. And it says that two months later, Hananiah died. Died. This story is reminiscent of the day in which we're living. 
and the fact that there are so many false teachers out there. In fact, when when the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, please tell us what it's going to be like in the end days. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, he said, don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And here's the thing. We are living in that day. And there are so many. We don't even know who they are half the time. They're all around us. And there are false prophets. There are false prophets. And then he goes on in the same message to the disciples. And he said, for false messiahs. Now listen carefully. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders. So as to deceive, if possible, even my chosen ones. We are seeing that many of God's people are falling. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4.4, 4, when he's talking about the day in which we're living, he said people will look to have their ears tickled. People want someone to tell them that it's going to be okay, that, that everything is going to turn out good, just like in Jeremiah's day. The people were listening to their lives. They were believing what Hananiah said over what Jeremiah said because Hananiah was telling them something good something good. In recent days, in recent days, we have seen more and more prophets of the Lord arising. We've heard them say things like this. Oh, God is going to take care of the evil in the White House. God will not let it continue. God is going to restore our freedoms. A time of peace is coming. You know what? I can tell you that the Bible does talk about a time of peace, but not before Jesus comes back. The, the time of peace that the Bible talks about is the millennium, which is right after the seven-year tribulation period when Jesus ushers in a new time, a new place, and we are going to have a time of peace. But nowhere in Scripture does it tell us that before Jesus comes that we're going to be having a time of peace. Not that great revival can't take place and that kind of thing, but not a time of peace. So these, these false prophets are saying all of these things. And I'm not saying that all of them are false. I'm just here today to tell you that we must, let, we must listen to God's voice above all the other voices that are out there because we don't know. We don't know if they're what they're really saying is true. I mean, they're saying, God gave me a word just because they say, the Lord told me this, or I had a vision, or I had a dream, does not mean that God gave them that word. In fact, the writer of Hebrews says it the best. This is what he says. In Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, he says, he says, long ago, long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, after Jesus, he has spoken to us through his son. Through his son. That tells us a lot about what God is telling us and the voice that we need to listen to the most. Jesus is the word. So we must listen to him. We must train our ears for his voice. We must train our ears for his voice. In John chapter 10, there's a beautiful analogy of the shepherd and the sheep. You're probably very familiar with it, but it, it talks about the sheepfold and, and the sheep and Jesus being the shepherd. And, it, and, and we're reminded that the moment that we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we become his sheep. We become his sheep. And it talks about him standing at the gate of the sheepfold. And this is what it says in John 10, 3. It says, the gate gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and they come to him as his sheep we should hear his voice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out in 10 4 it says they follow him because they know his voice they know his voice that those verses tell me this tell me two things first of all that your shepherd speaks to you that your shepherd speaks to you. He does, it doesn't say it's only for a few people. It says every sheep that is in the sheepfold, the shepherd speaks to them. And then number two is that his voice is what leads us. His voice is what leads us. And I want to remind you that he always has the best interest for us. He always does what is best 
for us, for us. So how does the shepherd speak to us? Well, let me offer you four things. And these things may be se seem redundant. They may seem like a cliche, but just listen. Just take time to listen because these are things that we need to be reminded of every single day. We need to be reminded of these things every single day. So the first and I believe the most foremost way that God speaks to us is definitely in the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is living and active. It is living and active. So it means that it's alive in us, that it's alive, that we can trust it, that it has life. The word of God has life. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 says, all scripture, all scripture from Genesis to Revelation is God breathed and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Absolutely the word of God is useful. Psalm 119, 105 says that the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So here's the thing about the word of God. Not one day, not one day should go by that we don't open the word of God and meditate on it and listen to it. Ponder it. When you open it up and you read a scripture, ask yourself, how does this relate to my life? What is the Lord saying to me? Even pray and say, Lord, what do you want me to learn about this? What do you want me to apply to my life? How can I change? How can I become more like you through this passage of scripture? And obviously, I am a huge advocate of Bible study. I don't write books. I write Bible studies because I'm called to bring the truth of the Word of God to God's people. Bible study literally changed my life. It literally changed my life. I'd been a Christian my almost my entire life since I was nine years old, and I went to Bible college and everything, but it was really when I started in a Bible study that really changed my life, and also it was during that time that God put the call on my life, that I knew the call was to bring the Word of God to God's people, and I can't think of a better way to do it than through Bible study because I can tell you things. I can I can write things out I can write a book but it's not gonna make that much of a difference but if you have questions that you can answer about that passage that's gonna change your life nothing else will so God speaks to us through his word and then number two is God speaks to us through prayer in fact Jesus demonstrated a life of prayer and it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 17 it says pray without ceasing Matthew 6 6 says but when you pray go into your inner room and shut the door and the father who sees in secret will reward you I took that literally when I was in college I lived at home there was no quiet place for me to be and I used to get up in the morning and I still get up early in the morning I've been doing that almost my entire life just to be with the Lord just to hear what he has to say to me and I literally took this um, as as gospel in my life when I was young and when I was in college and I used to get up and go in my closet and close the door, take a flashlight and read the word of God and spend time with the Lord in prayer. Prayer is communion with the Father. But here's the thing. We live in a busy day. Everybody's busy. We all have a lot on our plates and probably too much, but it's all good stuff. When our feet hit the floor in the morning, we are on mission to get all of those things on our to-do list done that day. But with that also comes the fact that we often put God and we put prayer on the back burner. It doesn't have the same place that other things have because we have too many things that we have to do. We have too many things that we have to do. But I want to remind you that Satan uses busyness in our lives because he knows that when we're busy, we're going to put God on the back burner. We're not going to listen to him speak and we're going to become weaker and he's going to have more power over us. But the more time that we listen to God and the more time that we make him a priority in our life, the more we will be stronger and we will be able to recognize the attacks that Satan brings against us. So Satan will use busyness in our lives. He will use busyness in our lives. 
When Jesus, when the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, he gave, us a, he gave them a model prayer. And in that prayer, we learn that praying, praying is communion with the Lord and that there's several topics that we should always make sure that we include every day. Worship, make sure that we worship the Lord. Confession, thanksgiving, oh my goodness. Living with a thankful heart, there's nothing better. And then, of course, petition. So my encouragement to you today is that you would carve out some time to commune with the Lord today carve out some time no matter what what's going on in your day take even just 10 minutes 10 minutes to carve out some time so that's the second way that he speaks to us through prayer the third way is through the holy spirit we forget sometimes that god has made his home in our hearts by way of the holy spirit and the holy spirit is probably one of the greatest blessings of living on this side of the cross of living on this side of the cross. Romans 8.26 says that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, We can know God's, who can know God's thoughts except God's own Spirit? Who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. I know if you've heard me uh, teach at all you've heard me say this that the moment that we come to Christ the Holy Spirit comes to make his home in our hearts he's there he's living in us but he may be inactive he may be inactive and so the way to make the Holy Spirit alive and for him to re for us to really truly hear what he's saying to us is to seek after Christ the more we seek after Christ the more the Holy Spirit will make his presence known and he will speak words into our minds and into our hearts from the father he'll tell us what the father needs to what the father wants us to to know and if the holy spirit is not active in your life that's very tragic because that's not what the holy spirit is meant to do he's meant to be alive in us so the more we seek after Jesus, the more the Holy Spirit will rise up in us. So the Holy Spirit helps us understand and hear the voice of our Father. And then lastly, we often hear, we often can hear God speaking through pastors and leaders and friends. You know, the early church, they spent time listening to the apostles' teaching. And so, um, so you know, God definitely uses others. But I want to encourage you to make sure that the pastor that you're listening to, the Bible teacher that you're listening to, or the mentor that you have in your life is solid and is standing on solid ground biblically. Biblically. So many people are falling and drifting and they're swallowing, they're swallowed up in deception. It is rampant. And it is all through the church. There are plenty of weak Christians out there. Let's not copy their behavior. Let's not be weak, but let's be strong in these days as we wait for our bridegroom to come back for us. If we develop a habit of listening, and John 15, um, 7 says that, um, that it, abiding in him and his word abiding in us is the way to do this. So if we are developing a habit of listening, then we will know his heart. And when we know his heart, we will recognize his voice. We will recognize his voice. So listening surely strengthens us. So my encouragement to you today is make sure that you take time to listen to him. Thank you for joining me today. For more information about our ministry, please visit our website and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel in order to be encouraged with solid truth.